uh, you know, I, I feel strongly that optometrists should utilize uh, labs in their practice because they can help a lot of people. They can help a lot of patients. We see so many patients in optometry and eye care, uh, almost two and a half times that is seen in primary care. So as the technology is improving with retinal imaging, especially with Anitas, where you could see an OCT angiography, but Anitas is really a much better screener uh, than OCT angiography. O- OCT angiography is really not a screening, uh, uh, a screening instrument we can see disease at the smallest level. Uh, Dr. Gold? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I was kind of astonished initially when Kerry pointed out to me just how many people optometrists see annually. So it really does put um, them in a unique position to be able to identify patients. And you know, as we talk about, if there's disease in the eye, there's going to be disease in the heart and the peripheral vessels as well. You know, the vasculature is the vasculature. Uh, and the optometrists have the ability to look uh, at the small vessels where I'm looking at, you know, things on more of a macro level. Hmm. But if there's vascular disease or inflammation, we're going to see it in both places. So it really is complementary. Absolutely. And, you know, you just mentioned the Anitas device. Craig Thomas is giving a talk right now on multi, multispectral imaging. So, so do you make a frequent use of this in your practice? I do. You know, I probably do over 150 to 200 scans a month and you know i could go on record to say i've saved people's lives because of that instrument because it will pick up hemorrhages and it'll pick up microaneurysm way before standard uh white light imaging can so uh and because of that instrument i was seeing these little microaneurysms where at the beginning i wasn't sure what they were and uh, I contacted Anitas and said, what, what are these things, these little bulges I'm seeing in the, in the micro blood vessels in the retina? They didn't, ha- they didn't have any idea, but because of my relationship with Dr. Gold, and we've actually taken a number of vascular, bi- vascular uh, uh, biology classes together in, in the area of functional medicine, I would, and with c- consultation with Dr. Gold, I realized it probably is elevated insulin could be elevated glucose or elevated insulin because elevated insulin could damage the blood vessels at a very early or early stage. In fact, our presentation is on, and it's, it's talking about insulin right now. And so I did a number of patients that came in and tested their insulin level, their, uh, their fasting and two-hour insulin, based on the work of Joseph Kraft, who was a pathologist out of, uh, out of Chicago, and uh, who recently, unfortunately, passed away in 94. Uh, but out of the n- next 18 patients who had these microaneurysms, 17 had elevated either fasting or two-hour two hour insulin levels. Mm. And some of them had, were already diabetic, but they were somewhere on the spectrum of insulin resistance, whether they were full-blown diabetics or pre-diabe- pre-diabetics. As we know from studying this topic, there's no such thing as Pre, pre-diabetes isn't pre-anything. It's a very dangerous disease. Right. Right. So, you know, so these patients with pre-diabetes, even though they don't meet the strict criteria, they still have all the same vascular complications. So it was our goal to try to help to identify these patients. Uh, and one of the, the markers that we use, which has been very helpful, is fasting insulin levels. And that's what we're trying to uh, talk a little about during this lecture. Right. Because we'll carry... Uh... You practice general optometry, I assume, right? How, how do you, I, people... practice in, I practice in a lens crisis. You can't get more general than that. Okay, so, <laughs> and so people are coming in to get their eyes examined because they want a pair of glasses, we'll say. They're asymptomatic. They just, just want to change their specs. How do you uh, go about the, discussing the fact that they're going to be giving them a whole series of lab tests? How do they take you know, a picture tells a thousand words, you know, I show them the picture and I know, you know, you know, when I, when the page, you know, it's a funny, it's a funny thing. I, I've been asked that question before, usually by optometrists, never by physicians, ne- never by physicians that are not non optometrists because when patients are coming to me, I'm their doctor. So if I say, and I recommend that they have these tests and they show them the, 
photograph of the microaneurysms or little tiny hemorrhages, you know, they they say, sure. I mean, they, they want to know if they're diabetic or pre-diabetic or somewhere on the insulin resistant uh, scale. So, so uh, I'm t t t asking the questions so as a total ignoramus, which uh, may be possible our audiences too. Uh, you, they've never done a lab test before. They've never even approached it. Will a laboratory accept them to when they say, "Here's what I want you to, to test." The lab say, "Who are you?" I mean, that's a, that, that's a great question. I mean, in New Jersey, optometrists could do labs. There are many states where you don't even need any doctor to do a lab. Like Arizona, you could just walk in and to a clinic and do a lab. You could there's labs online. I mean, you could go online and. And they'll tell you where to go to get the blood drawn, and you, you don't even need a doctor. You know, they'll do it online, and they'll give you the analysis. So ha having to say that, can an optometrist do it? First of all, we can. There's no problem there. But, uh, you know, we're practicing in 2018. We're a very important part of the healthcare system, and we see two and a half times more patients than go and get a blood drawer at family practice or internist for a general checkup. So as the technology is getting better, we're being put in a position where, you know, we're going to we're going to have to recommend the, these tests almost like a general physician would because we're finding disease so so early before anybody else is finding disease. Great. Good answer. Right. And in fact, it's funny, actually, I just went online when you said that you can order your own tests online. People actually, you can. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to pay for it. I know they'll pay for it, but it's funny. I didn't realize that just, you know, anyone off the street could actually start ordering all these different labs. This is crazy. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is what, this is what you know, people are taking medicine in their own hands now, you know, with the Internet and, you know, Dr. Google. You know, people are, are educated up to a point. Sometimes people are so smart, they outsmart themselves by getting a refraction online or a prescription for contact lenses. As I said, you know, the eye is a biomarker for systemic diseases. There's o over 170 systemic diseases that you could see in the eye. So that's really a very bad idea. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Yikes. So do you have any sort of concrete cases that you just might want to share with us uh, that, that you might have seen that, that, you know, that you use labs for in your practice? So I'll start off and then I'll have Dr. Gold uh, finish it. I had a patient with a branch retinal vein occlusion, a lipid retinopathy, who uh, was basically, was, uh, who we sent out for labs and what was elevated was their LP little a, uh, which this is one of the reasons I started doing labs to begin with is this, I would see hemorrhages or I'd see problems in the back of the eye and I would send it for a regular lab and they would come back and always tell me there's nothing wrong with the patient. People don't have hemorrhages or microaneurysms or branch vein occlusions in the eye for no reason. There's right. a reason. It's just whether or not we find the reason. Now there's over a thousand biomarkers that you could do. You know, I'm, you know, myself and Dr. Gold, have picked these biomarkers, and th these are the ones that we concentrate on because they're very important for vascular disease. But uh, this patient had elevated LP little a, and I'll have Dr. Gold talk about what that means. Right, so actually this case is fairly topical. I'm not sure what part of the country uh, you guys reside in, but there was an article in the New York Times, uh, I think it was last week, uh, in the health section, uh, talking about LP little a. So, you know, typically um, the physicians are doing lipid profiles, looking at, you know, basic cholesterol, uh, but looking at the advanced biomarkers, LP little a is genetically inherited. If it's very elevated, it puts you at significantly in increased risk for uh, cardiovascular disease. It's a portion of the LDL that's uh, highly atherogenic. So, uh, in, in that particular case, that was a reason for that brand retinal vein occlusion. Uh, and then by implementing, you know, certain strategies, uh, we were able to decrease it a little. You know, uh, with this LP little a, it's very difficult to get it to the normal range. But even if we reduce it just by, a, you know, a small amount, we could see clinical improvement above and, above and beyond that. So 
So that happened to be, uh, you know, uh, an excellent example of uh, matching, you know, an uh, uh, optometric case with you know, advanced biomarkers. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So I, you know, I it's it's kind of interesting. We had you're you're the second lecture today. Now that I think about it, because we had one yesterday too, also discussing labs. Um, so I'm hoping that you're sparking a trend. Uh, you know, because last year I know I know, Carrie, you gave this talk to us last year, right? You were the first one, and so now we're seeing more lecturers coming online talking okay. about it so, as so well. The, the final question is the mechanics. Yep. Uh, you, to do a lab testing, you have to draw blood. <laughs> right, that's part of it. Who does that in your practice? Uh, yeah, no, we, I write a I write a prescription, and the patient goes to a lab, and they get the blood. They could go to Quest. They could go to LabCorp. You know, there are labs out there. I have a local lab who wants my business. And what they, because, you know, if you go to Quest or LabCorp, sometimes you can wind up with a big bill if, if it's not covered, if you don't give the appropriate diagnosis. Right. There's a local lab that said, you know, it's not covered. Uh, the insurance rejects it. We're not going to charge the patient. Wow, we that's bill. novel. We don't have bill. Yeah. So, you know, people want, they want my business. They want my patients to come in there and do the drawer, but I don't draw in my own office. I mean, you can. I mean, I have had offers for a phlebotomist to come in, but that's not that's not the way I do it. I sent to a lab. Right. Good. Cool. So, so it's something that every optometrist, wherever they practice, can be doing it within their practice. It's it's not a problem. That's good to know. Great information. Yeah. So why aren't yeah, so more I, ODs involved in getting labs for their patients? Is it that it's they don't know what they don't know? Is it that it's getting too medical and that's not where they want to go? Is it time consuming for them to talk to the patient about it? What? Why do you think more ODs aren't getting involved? You know, I, I think that, you know, we weren't trained in this. You know, this is a lot of this mm -hmm. is self-taught. But I think now we're, you know, I, I'm not involved. In, I'm not a teacher at any of the universities, but I suspect that the, the new ODs are being trained in this now. And, you know, you know, you figure even when I, when I graduated from optometry school in 84 and I did a residency in 85, you know, the knowledge I had then and every three or four years, the entire, almost the entire knowledge base turns over. So you have to stay current. You go to lectures like this, these presentations, right. you have a curiosity to learn. And, you know, I think you're going to see more and more optometrists doing it because the technology like Anitas is getting so good that you're seeing disease so early, it behooves you to refer for these biomarkers because if you don't do it yourself, the internists don't know which test to do. So they're not going to find elevated LP little a. They're not, they're not going to find the homocysteine or the high, you know, or, uh, or the high ferritin or the GGT, you know, they're not going to find these. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know this and be an expert in vascular disease. That's why the cardiologists and the optometrists are such good partners because we're both looking at blood vessels, but just different, different parts of the body. Dr. Gold. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, we could have given the lecture and just basically stated definitions of what everything was, but we thought it would be, hopefully more interesting uh, to the people listening to make it uh, clinically relevant. Sure. Great. All right, guys. Well, well, thanks so much for doing this. And, uh, you know, I've got to actually pop in to see your lecture as well. We've been trapped in here all day, so we haven't been able to watch anything. So right, right. now the day's wrapping up, we can finally go back and watch. So th thanks again for participating. This has been great. Great information.